pressure is so legit because this thing won't let you start more than 10 minutes late and I was not ready. So anyway, here I am. Bruh. Uh, it's wild out there. Everybody's mad at each other on Facebook. All the bros are mad in the house. So, um, sorry that I was late, but, uh, I, it's totally my fault. I just wasn't ready. Um, I put on makeup today because I haven't done that in a long time. And I feel like I look like, uh, I don't know. I don't have a funny joke about my face right now. I'm just not feeling it, which is fine. We all have those days. On the average day, I spend like less than three minutes on my makeup. I put on eyeliner, mascara, and lipstick. And today I, um, it took longer than I thought. Anyway, so today I want to talk about women being fat. And, uh, which is kind of like a loaded topic, but if you look around, it's true. I was going to look up some stats on exactly what percentage of women are overweight, but I didn't get to do that because I was fucking around with eyeshadow. Because my priorities are very bad. So anyway, um, women are fat. And uh, everybody who looks around knows it. And so I want to talk about, like, why. So, obviously, in this group, we don't subscribe to the calories in, calories out model of obesity. Okay, this idea that everyone is just fat because we stopped exercising and we don't, and we eat too much. Okay, the data is in. It's not even controversial anymore that... The hormonal model of obesity and perhaps some admixture of the hormonal model and the sort of um, reductive oxygen species model that has to do with linoleic acid and the breakdown of mit mitochondria is more accurate. We don't need to get into all that, okay? The point that I'm trying to make is that we can't just sit back and say women are fat because they're lazy and they eat too much because it's just not true. And and, and that's not saying that there are no lazy women or no women who, who, um, you know, eat too much, but that's not the cause of this problem. That is not what is driving this epidemic and this like crisis. So what is it? And Gary Taubes, uh, writes about this in his book, um, what's this book called? Uh, not the case for keto. Is it the case for keto? It might be the case for keto. No. No. Uh, not good calories, bad calories. What's the other one? Why we get fat. Why we get fat. Great book, by the way. And he talks about this in uh, a lot of his lectures. And if you go into my group, Primal Weight Loss, on Facebook, and you go to the featured section at the top, there's a video of Gary Taubes, and he's talking about this. So what he talks about are the Pima Indians. Um... The Pima Indians are a really good like case study that has been extensively looked at in the literature when it comes to women in particular and obesity. Okay, so who the fuck are the Pima Indians? Well, the Pima Indians kind of got pwned by the white man because the Pima Indians were doing fine, and this is in the Southwest, I believe, like New Mexico, Arizona, something like that. And all of a sudden, we basically, we fucking wasn't there, but like, whatever, white people, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, uh, diverted, diverted their, their water that they used to irrigate their crops, and they entered a famine. These were people eating an ancestral diet that they've been eating, that was natural foods that they've been eating for many, many generations unto forever, and all of a sudden, they were eating, uh, I really hope that my mic is working. Yes, it is okay. And all of a sudden, they didn't have any food because they couldn't irrigate their crops. So they had to rely on um, what they could get from the general store. And it was mainly like flour and sugar and stuff that you could make from flour and sugar. And they were living in a legit famine. Like they were starving to death. Their infant mortality rate was super high. And what you would see were lean men, starving babies, obese women, and there's, 
there are accounts of like the doctor's offices at the time where the women would be in there with their starving crying babies and women would be fat and what's also interesting is that the women were doing more manual labor than the men in general so the idea that all of these women had gotten together and decided to hoard food and get fat while their babies starved goes against everything we know about maternal instinct. And we now know that obesity is a disease of poverty. Okay, It's not something that you see typically among the upper class, the wealthy, the educated. Who's obese? Well, it's poor people. Why? Okay, you can make some kind of like heard our argument about like food stamps and the welfare system. The truth is that obesity is a disease of poverty because it's a disease of cheap food. They went from eating fresh crops to eating food made with flour and sugar. Women in particular are affected by that because women in particular are hormonal beings. We have more going on hormonally than men or it's more complicated because it's tied to fertility and childbearing, our ovaries, our uterus, and our menstrual cycle, all these things that are going on. Okay. And age ties into it, although it's not as simple as age either. So, bottom line, it's easier for women to get fat because it's easier for women to get fucked up hormonally. Also, our bodies like to store more fat. We have more lipophilic cells than men do, partially because we are made to carry babies and to survive pregnancy, even in times of scarcity. So what does this mean in our culture, right? I mean, a lot of things have happened, like, for example, the fact that it's easier for fat women to get with like better looking men it's easier for um it's become more common for men to be tolerant of corpulence and we're, we've actually started to sort of program men away from selecting thinner mates which historically men have tended to select you know, the standard of beauty has tended to be, like, thinner. And they say, you know, sell these arguments about, like, Renaissance paintings or whatever. Like, oh, Renaissance paintings, the women were fat. And these, you know, fertility goddesses were, like, you know, these big fat fatties with pendulous breasts and hips and whatever. These were hyperbole. These were hyperbolic. The reason why renaissance women were painted that way is because they were the rich they were unattainable that's not what every woman looked like okay that was like oh look how fleshy they are because they have money it was it was look it was um languorous luxurious to get to be that fat because people weren't shoving down flour and sugar you know obesity was not an epidemic it was rare uh so, historically, we've been pretty good about choosing mates who are healthy. And so you wouldn't choose a woman who was carrying around 80, 120 extra pounds of body fat. Because, as we now know quite well, there is definitely a correlation between obesity and infertility. And, and also, um, not, just, not just infertility, but... Just poor health, like that chick's gonna die. You guys are like 55. <laughs> but now you have men not only not minding as much, but also like kind of seeking it out. Like, oh, that's my shit. I like the thick, whatever. And you have men talking mad shit on the internet about skinny girls. Okay, shit, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, you could say that this is just a cope. And a lot of it is because like those are the women that they can get so they're gonna like try to justify it but also there probably is some programming away from thin women and 
and programming toward uh, what you see all day in the media now. It's more common, right? It's more common than not. Like, more than half of women are overweight. More than half. As a matter of fact, the average American woman is obese. The average American woman is under 5'4 and weighs about 170 pounds, which is a BMI of 30, which is just right at the beginning of obesity. So, what do we do about it? It's so interesting today. I'm, I made friends with a neighbor. Um, she just like, I was roller skating yesterday and she just like stopped me and she was like, oh, I have rollerblades and I really want to do it, but I'm scared because I wiped out. And I was like, don't be a pussy, you know? And so she was like, well, maybe we can go out sometime and you can like help me. And I said, sure. And then she was like, hey, maybe we can work out together. And I said, sure. And then she actually texted me today and she was like, hey, do you want to go to the gym? And I was like, sure. I've already been once today, but fuck it, let's go. So we just like walked over to our fitness center. And um, she, like ever since I met this chick, all she talks about is COVID. She's like, I had COVID so bad twice, I almost died, blah, blah, blah. She's like, COVID, COVID, COVID. I'm just still getting over COVID. I had it months ago, COVID. And I'm like, COVID is not a fucking part of my life. I don't think about it. Like, occasionally I see someone with a mask on in public and I'm like, you might be mentally ill. Because it just doesn't happen here. But like, whatever. Someone to work out with, fine, I'll help you roller skate. So, we go to the gym and the whole time she's on the elliptical. And I'm just fucking running on the treadmill. And she's like, hey, so, COVID, blah, blah, blah. And I'm trying to get healthy. And my functional medicine doctor, and they have a nutritionist. And my nutritionist fixed my diet, and now I'm eating this. But I'm still really scared of COVID. And I was like, look, I had COVID. Um, I had it for like two days, and then I took ivermectin, and it was gone like a day later. I did kind of overdose myself on ivermectin accidentally. But, uh, COVID is not a thing if you're metabolically healthy, but there is a direct correlation between poor metabolic health and ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is what kills you if you get COVID. So probably like just get metabolically healthy and then COVID like won't be a part of your life. You fucking won't think about it because it's not normal to just walk around all fucking day thinking about a respiratory virus. Like as soon as we got to the gym, she was like, I'm gonna wash my hands. And she was like, I'm such a germaphobe since COVID. And I was like, cool, I'm about to run barefoot on this fucking treadmill. Uh, so she was like, what do you mean? What's ours? What is, how do I know if I'm metabolically healthy? Blah, blah, blah. What I didn't say was, I'm looking at you and you're not. But I did tell her, you know, fasting insulin, C-reactive protein, um, full lipid panel, what's your triglyceride to HDL ratio, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she, uh, she was like, well, she was telling me some of her lab values and I was like, well, that doesn't sound good. Then she was telling me that her nutritionist has her eating fucking oatmeal with raisins. No shit. Oatmeal with raisins, um, apples and pineapple, six small meals a day. Just like, I remember when I was, when I first started doing this like a couple years ago, there was this chick. And she was like super duper obese and she was only in her mid 40s and she had a heart she'd already had a heart attack and i was like what is your nutritionist um having you eat and she was like well i snack you know on like apples and peanut butter and i'm like first of all why are you snacking okay second of all just anyway she ended up getting cancer ovarian cancer which is has a strong correlation with obesity. I think that she survived so far in this intermission. Thank God, but she didn't last very long. She was like, this is too extreme for me. And and she didn't have any concept of what carbs were. Like, she was like, oh, I ate a chicken chili. And for some reason, my blood sugar was really high afterward. And I was like, well, what's in it? And it was full of like lean chicken and white beans. I was like, that's carbs. Like, how is it 2022 and people don't fucking know what carbs are? I don't understand. But anyway, this chick is on the elliptical and she's like, so my nutritionist has me eating oatmeal with raisins, apples and pineapple, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you have to stop eating all of that shit like right now. And I was telling her what to eat. And she was like, how come nobody's ever told me this? And I was like, 
I don't know, but also, like, you have not done your due diligence to find out what is healthy. And I get that most people don't think that way. But they're just going to the doctor, and the doctor's like, do this, do this. When she tells me, when she told me what she was eating before, I'm like, fucking raising oatmeal is a step in the right direction. She was telling me that when she had COVID, she was like, Kit Kats, Tootsie Rolls, Chex Mix. No wonder you got so sick. Like, you were just hyper insulinemic as fuck. Like, I'm surprised you didn't fucking die. And she's just, she has no idea. Like, every concept I was telling her, she did not know what ketosis was. But like, you know, you get into ketosis and then you can fast easily. What is ketosis? Well, it's when your body burns fat instead of sugar. Why is that good? Well,. <laughs> Uh, the thing is that like what happened to her the reason why she isn't losing weight she's still like probably borderline obese definitely overweight I fucking hope she's not watching this by the way because I did give that bitch my card <laughs> just like fair warning if I meet you and talk to you about shit it might end up one year but I won't be sure so so she's like um She's, she's pretty fat, right? So the problem is that, like, if you were eating sugar or, like, carbs every four to six hours or whatever, I don't care how many calories you're eating. I don't care if you're only eating 1,200 calories. You can't burn your body fat because your insulin is up. And insulin inhibits fat lipolysis. You cannot metabolize fat if your insulin is elevated. So the only energy that you can access is that 1,200 calories that you're eating. What does your body do when you need 2,000 calories to do your daily activities, but you're only taking in 1,200 and you can't access your fat? It down-regulates everything. It slows your basal metabolic rate. So like, you, you will get cold because you, your body will not, it will down-regulate your temperature, your respiration, your heartbeat, your brain activity. You're going to be cold, you're going to have brain fog, you're going to be lethargic. You're going to be tired, exhausted, hungry as fuck, right? You're going to feel awful, you're going to think about food all the time. Look in, uh, Ansel Keys, the, uh, what do they call it? The Minnesota Starvation Experiment, I think it was Minnesota. I'll talk about that in another video because I've talked about it before, but um, if your body doesn't have the energy, it will find a way to conserve because it has no choice. And then it will start to break down muscle and your catabolic is fuck at the point. You're burning protein, you know, and once it exhausts the excess skin and cartilage, whatever, it's burning muscle. So what you do is you cut your carbs until you are in ketosis, which means that your body is making your own glucose in your liver through a process called gluconeogenesis. You don't need to take in exogenous glucose to burn, and you are able to access your body fat. And the end result of that process is you spill ketones. You can measure it in your urine or your blood, your breath. So you're in ketosis, you're burning fat, so, now you can stop eating and it's easy because you're used to burning fat, right? So when you stop eating, your body's like, oh, well, we already weren't needing glucose, so we'll just keep doing this, we'll just keep being in ketosis, we'll just keep burning fat, it's fine, fuck it. You can go like that as long as you have body fat. As long as you're watching your electrolytes, you know, potassium, magnesium, and sodium, and you're going to be fine. She was like, you go three days without eating? You're too skinny to do that. You're anorexic. I was like, I'm fucking, I'm on a treadmill right now. I have fat. I have a fucking mommy belly. I'm still trying to get rid of Like, I have fat on my body. I have fat on my arm. I have fat on my inner thigh. Like, I have fat on me. You know? I look, like, thin from a distance. But, like, I have these little pockets. Of, like, I'm trying to get rid of that shit. So like, if I can do it, this bitch can definitely do it. But you know, her her uh, 
doctor's order, don't fast, don't, don't skip meals, it's bad for you, blah, blah, blah. You have a thyroid problem, the thyroid problems are bullshit. Fast, stop being fat, it's gonna go away. Um, a lady last night messaging me, and she's like, I can't fast or be in ketosis because I'm epileptic. I was like, ketosis, a ketogenic diet has been a, an established therapy for epilepsy since like the 1920s. And your, your doctor's telling you you can't be in ketosis? You should be in ketosis. You should more or less stay in ketosis if you're epileptic. It's a frontline therapy. But no, they've told her, don't skip any meals, but take these pills. So it's all a fucking racket, okay? You know these functional medicine doctors, you pay all this money to some fucking nutritionist. Meanwhile, there's no telling what that fucking piece of shit hack nutritionist is making. Meanwhile, I'm on the treadmill telling this bitch what to do for free. Making zero fucking dollars doing it. And she will take my advice or she won't, but if she takes it, it'll save her stupid fucking life. And I will get nothing for it. That nutritionist is probably making, I don't know, a lot more than zero dollars. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. So that's why women get fat. Hormones. Hormones. And the fact that, um, that we need to carry babies. And it fucks us. And the end result is that um, you've ended up with this sort of like feminist porn, body positivity, fat acceptance movement that's extremely toxic because um, you have all these women with this pathological need for some type of positive attention that they're not getting anywhere because they're walking around with fucking 100 pounds of excess flesh on them. You know, nobody's catcalling that bitch. But she's able to put a photo on Instagram and she's going to have 600 keyboard warriors tell her what a beautiful fucking goddess she is. And everybody gets their dopamine hit. That chick who posted on Instagram gets her dopamine hit. And every single one of those virtue signalers gets to feel good about themselves because they said Slay Queen on Instagram to some 600 pound behemoth, right? And we all did the right thing and we all feel super good about it. Yay! Meanwhile, everybody dying of obesity. Um, odds are really good that you are going to die from what you eat. I'm going to repeat that. Odds are really good you're going to die from what you eat. All the shit that we die from is directly related to diet. We don't have to die from it. Dementia, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, all related all caused by your shitty fucking diet. So, if you don't want to die from that stuff, you change what you eat. You get into ketosis, you start fasting. You can cycle in and out of ketosis, but I recommend it for most people. But you can be in it for a long time, be perfectly fucking fine, lose a shit ton of weight, start fasting. You can go carnivore, you can go keto, you can go low carb, I don't give a shit. If you have a lot of health issues or gut issues, you should probably fucking go carnivore. Or if you just want to do it faster and just be like badass about it, you should do that. Anyway, it doesn't have to be this way. That's the really fucked up part is you look around and you're like, oh, it doesn't have to be this way. Everything sucks, but it doesn't have to suck. So your takeaway today Don't buy into the whole bullshit of like, everybody's just a lazy, fat piece of shit. We've all been given really bad advice for the past 60, 70 years. A lot of these women have tried really hard. I had tried really hard. I have tremendous fucking willpower. And I used it. And I did every diet. I did everything they told me to. I was raw vegan for 10 months. How many of you motherfuckers can be raw vegan for 10 months? Like, keep it real. You probably couldn't. I did it. And I was fat as fuck when I did it. And I was still fat when it was done didn't lose anything, just got sicker, um, raw vegan, weight watcher, slim fast, 1200 calories a day, I did everything, man, every pill, metabolite, herbalife, weight watchers, everything, you know, I did it all, and a lot of these women have done it all, the problem is not with them, it's with what they're being told to do, so just look at it differently, you know, like, 
you don't have to like tell them to slay a queen because they're fat, that's not what I'm saying. But recognize that the understanding of nutrition as in the mainstream is absolute bullshit. And if it weren't, we would be solving this problem by now. We haven't solved shit because we don't understand obesity. Mainstream medicine and nutrition does not understand obesity. Until they do, then it's going to stay this way. Okay, that is my rant for the day. I'm trying to do these lives more often and make them shorter. So, progress. Love you guys. <laughs>